Hi there, in this lecture I am going to discuss um, a, a general relativity with respect to pi space and I'm going to discuss the uh, the four vector and time. Um, a general relativity uh, time is seen as an extra dimension and it's in, in addition to the three well-known spatial dimensions and we get a four-dimensional uh, view of space space-time and it, as we all know it's called space-time. Now in Pi space uh, uh, originally in the original documentation I discussed the uh, the implementation of time and I said it's it's proportional to the diameter change of a Pi shell. So in Pi space the way it works is when you move faster a pi shell or an atom or or an air or some some area some combination of pi shells loses area now you can take the, the case of an individual pi shell and what you can do is you can uh, you can calculate the diameter change with respect to it uh, the traditional uh, formula for for time dilation in special relativity is this one here where it where you've where you've t, you've t zero, and then you have the Lorentz transformation. I won't go into it in any great detail, but suffice to say, if you look up special relativity, um, you'll see that this is the formula that's used. Uh, moving along quickly, uh, the basic idea is if you were an astronaut um, uh, uh, traveling at zero point eight for uh, speed of light for thirty years you would find that the stationary observer uh, would uh, with respect to the astronaut would have 50, 50 years would have passed and the formula I've just shown you up here would would help you derive figure that out now in general relativity what we have is the concept of proper time and um, what we want to do is we want to work from the, the viewpoint of the the stationary uh, observers. So what we want to say is instead of saying, instead of saying we know that the astronaut has traveled thirty years at at, the, at at point eight of the speed of light, what we want to say is if if we if we're on the say the Earth for fifty years and we know that the astronaut has traveled for at point eight for fifty years, what's the what's the amount of time the astronaut has experienced? Um, so typically, uh, the way that is 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 uh, worked out is is with the following formula, where we have uh, t, which would be the uh, the time that the person would spend on Earth, times uh, with with respect to the observer on Earth, and then the speed of the astronaut, and that would give us the proper time uh, with the proper time that the astronaut would uh, would experience. Uh, in a more t uh, technically correct way, we see here that the, 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 the proper time is calculated with respect to the four vector. And uh, if you've studied general relativity, you'll know that, um, that the, the, the proper time is then calculated along a path uh, that the, uh, that the the astronaut would follow, and therefore we can calculate with respect to the observer um, uh, the amount of time. Uh, sorry, with respect to the astronaut, the amount of time that's elapsed. So if if the observer on Earth says fifty years and the astronaut's traveling at point eight, we'll know that the astronaut using four vector uh, will have uh, thirty years. So uh, we can take uh, a simple example. Let's say that we're traveling, uh, if we're waiting 50 years and we stay at a, a zero, zero, zero uh, position uh, for 50 years, if we put that into the formula, we get 50 years back. So there's been no relative movement. So that's just like uh, that you've remained stationary. Now uh, we can take the example here where we use proper, the uh, general relativity proper time where we know that the person has uh, waited 50 years on the earth and we know that the astronaut has traveled uh, for uh, 40 
light years at point 50 times point 0.8 is 40 light years we put the values into the formula and we get the square root of of uh, um, 900 and then we get 30 light years proper time now we can also use the uh, amended special relativity formula which is the uh, t times the the velocity uh, piece so we get 50 times 1 minus 0 0.8 squared which is this the, the speed that the astronauts traveled at and we end up with 50 times 0 0.6 and once again we get 30 light years now the this the the special relativity uh, work was uh, extended in Pi space uh, if you've been following it and maybe you, you have or you haven't but basically uh, in Pi space there's a there's a formula which is uh, that the square root of 1 over v squared over c squared is the cos of the arc sine v over c I won't attempt to, do, to prove it here but basically if you know the uh, if you know the um, if you know the uh, the formula, then you'll know that uh, that uh, that that's the the case. So you put that in, and you get 50 times the cos arc sine 0 0.8, and you get 30 light years. Now, you might wonder why would you bother using the pi space formula at all uh, if you have proper time calculation with general relativity? And the answer is pretty simple: is that um, is that uh, what you have in uh, pi space is um, you have you see everything in terms of area loss, uh, which maps to energy uh, change, and then you have diameter change, which maps to uh, a pr a time. So instead of having to jump into a new notation such as the Minkowski version of um, time, you just treat time. Uh, you tr you just treat time as a uh, as the diameter uh, shortening of a pie shell, and you can calculate the proper time. All you need to know is the observer uh, time, uh, the speed of the relative mo the motion relative to you, and you can just add them all up uh, using the cos arc sine approach, and uh, and you get the answer. So. We can then see the Minkowski approach where we have one up here and this is the, the proper time. This is the, the time, the, uh, the observer time and these are the, the subtractions you know, in terms of dimensions. And then if you think in terms of units, we think of t squared and which is proportional to the diameter. So, uh, so if we get time and then we squared it, proportional to an area change and then the the position the movement is also with regard to uh, squaring of the the position so we get c squared as it's the maximum uh, distance you can travel uh, per second uh, if you use units c equals one so so what you have then is uh, is a very simple kind of uh, notion for for time which is uh, using a a field notation in in the pi space uh, a theory where as you move closer to center of gravity uh, these are the field points uh, the larger ones are up here the smaller ones are down here and uh, and time will move slower where the diameter shortened and the larger diameters uh, time will move faster so in, in pi space uh, the way we think of time is if you have a pi shell and um, it has a smaller diameter, then it has a smaller clock tick. So as you move into a gravity field and you move down through it and you move faster, your pie shells get smaller and therefore your clock tick is, 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 is slower. Now, one of the advantages of pi space is uh, when you look at uh, the proper time, for example, when you calculate the Schwarzschild radius, uh, you can see the, uh, the, the the proper time calculation here um, you can see the proper time calculation here we can apply the the the, the this value here to uh, to pi space we can see that the proper time is uh, 1 minus the 2gm over or c squared which is uh, something that's been derived in other uh, forums and then we can uh, we can then 
we can then do one minus and then we get a value and then we calculate the the change in the clock tick the the, the amount of uh, the percentage or the actual fraction of the clock tick uh, how much slower it's getting now in pi space we can represent that same value with uh, sine arc cos and we can uh, we can say 1 minus 2 gm over or c squared uh, but more interestingly we just think of all we think of is um, the area changes uh, with respect to a pi shell so we can we can not only add you know the the Schwarzschild's radius we can add the rotation of the earth so it becomes 1 minus this value minus the rotation of the earth and if we look at it here we're, we're all we're really doing is just taking one and we're subtracting the Schwarzschild radius uh, and and the rotation of the earth and more generically we can say it's one minus the area change on the north pole minus the area change of rotation on the earth and so on and we all you need to then do is just think in terms of subtracting um, area uh, to a pi shell as it moves into the planet uh, so you move down to the north pole you calculate the amount of area change to a pi shell then you say that the north pole then you say the planet's spinning you subtract that area change with in terms of c squared and then you put it into this formula and that'll give you the proper time and uh, and and that's it i mean the the basic idea in pi space is time is not a special uh other thing it's it's actually uh, uh the way i phrase it is um I'll read it out. Therefore, we can conclude in pi space that proper time is a pure diameter change calculation in pi space. Namely, we don't need to multiply by the constant c speed of light. So all you need to do, all you need to think about in pi space, if you want to calculate the proper time, is is you take the observer pi shell outside the gravity field, uh, the inertial observer, and then you move into the frame. Uh, you look at the metric. You say that the you're 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 losing area on the pie shell due to velocity, due to spin, due to charge, due to anything you can calculate. You put it into the formula, and uh, you subtract them from from one, which is the observer pie shell, and then you just get your value out, and that's that's your that's your adjusted uh, uh, proper time. Now, in, in the case of uh, the astronaut on the Earth, you know, what we have is uh, we have we know that it's 50 years have passed on the Earth. Uh, so, for example, we know 50 years have passed on the Earth. So that's a slightly different calculation as 50 times the cost of 0 0.8. So that's 50 year 50 years of time times the diameter shrinkage. So that's how you map it in terms of say uh, uh, years on earth and in this case here this is how you calculate it in terms of uh, some metric uh, the Schwarzschild metric so so you know so instead of thinking of time I mean I guess what I'm trying to say is instead instead of thinking of time as a as a as another dimension you think of uh, gravity is compressing uh, pi shells they lose area there's spin there's charge uh, there's a variety of uh, forces of, of changing the size of the pi shell making it move in various ways you have the metric to help you calculate that in pi space and then you just use the sine arc cost one minus the changes and you got yourself the proper time so it's actually uh, the, the general relativity is very powerful and um, you can think of pi space as a the way I'd, I like to phrase it is you can think of pi space as a computationally efficient way to try and solve uh, general relativity. You can think in terms of pure general relativity or pure pi space on its own, but uh, pi space in theory should help uh, to make general relativity more computationally efficient to compute the values uh, for things like proper time. Um, I won't go into um, other other aspects of general relativity. It's not a 
it's not a complete silver bullet for general relativity but for things like the metric and um, uh, proper time it, it, it is useful uh, hopefully as you see here that's all